Hello and welcome. Now we have this course slider to do where we have top courses here. You can see the elements are moving around the page and there's some animations as we change the course list here. But we want to make sure we get this title in here, this underline that's going across, as well as being able to have these elements kind of sitting here. So let's get started in our project. We'll move over to the SRC and we'll make a new component folder. The component folder will be called Course Slider. And then inside of there, make your Course Slider.js, capital of course. And we can do some work inside of here, just setting it up. Just import React from React. And we have a few more things that we will be importing, like those arrows and stuff like that, but let's just get started first. So const course slider, make your fat arrow function and export it default. Now let's just return a div here. So just return a div that says course slider. And we'll bring that into our app by going to pages, landing, and bringing it in here. So import course slider from, and we can go find it, components, course slider, course slider. And it'll be below the call to action, so bring it in there, course slider. Here we are, there's our course slider component in the right position. It's below all the rest of them. Let's head back into it and get some work done. We need to start working with the actual dummy data that we have. And instead of dummy data is courses. So let's bring that in now. Import courses from, and then let's get to it. It's two folders up, dummy data courses. We have the courses in there. Now courses is an array and I'm just going to get the title of the first course over here. So inside of my div I'll open up some curly braces here and I will type in courses at zero and then dot title. Let's take a look at that. The Alchemy of Automation. That's our first course in there and there's a few more in there so if you just want to change it to one small business accelerator. You see we are getting the information now from this courses file which has a few different courses in it, four of them all together. We'll head back into course slider and actually get some work done in here now. Let's wrap our return. And let's change this div here. It's now going to be class name course slider. Now inside of that, I know we need a title first, so let's make a div. Class name equal to course slider underscore underscore title. And here we could just write top courses. Now after that div, we want the underline. So let's make that div class name, course slider, underscore, underscore, underline. And you can make that self-closing because nothing's going to go in there. We're just going to design that with like a border bottom so it looks like a nice line on the page. And then finally here, I want to make another div with class name, course, dash slider, underscore, underscore, container. So this here will contain, open that back up, will contain here, all of this. So this is the container, the course slider container um, is containing everything in here, including the arrows, everything like that is in the course slider container.
Let's start off with our title. We should get that looking good first. So we'll save this. We will move into SCSS, make a new file, underscore course slider dot SCSS. And in here, we know we have quite a few things to go through. Let's just start with dot course slider. We also made the title, so end underscore underscore title. We also made the underline, so end underline. And then finally we made that container, so container. Great, now let's bring this into our main with our import at import dot slash course slider. We're in, we're set up. I'm going to set up my SAS converter right here with yarn run SCSS. And we are running. So here we are, we want to start with our title, but let's make sure we actually style the container first. We'll give it a position of relative. The container will have a display of flex. And we're going to do a lot of different stuff in here. We're not just going to use flex this whole time, this lesson. Uh, we're definitely gonna move over into grid as well. And I'll show you block on the next one here when we go to title, we'll do that too. Uh, we'll have a flex direction of column a width of 100% and a margin top. And this should be for rem. That's the separator we've been using pretty much. Okay, you can see that margin top of for rem there. Let's go to the title. I want that to be centered and looking good. So let's make that display. That will be block. Now let's just look at a block display here. We'll just inspect it. And what happens with it is a block display takes up the entire line. Uh, something like an inline block wouldn't take up the entire line like that, but we want the entire line taken up by a title because we want the title to be centered in the page and nothing on the sides of this title. So it works perfectly for what we're looking for. So let's set ourselves a text align and a font size in here. We want the text align to definitely be center and the font size needs to be much bigger. Let's try three rem. There we go, we have our top courses now looking good. So we have our title looking good. Now let's get our underline looking good. Again, we could use a display of block because this underline is going the entire way. We can do our margin top here as well. We don't want it to be butted up against the title. So just down below the title a bit. So we'll margin top to rem. And then we will border bottom. It'll be one pixel solid. And then we will do RGBA. And we haven't brought in our variables yet. Let me do that real quick. Uh, import variables. And now we could write in here color, oh, dollar sign first, color dash black comma, let's do it at 0.15 for the underline. Okay, now we have this underline over here looking pretty good. It's going the entire page. We could shorten this if you'd like to. Um, it'd be this sort of thing. So with about 70%. And now it's 70%. And there's a cool trick for this. We're just going to add margin left and right. both of them on auto. And now we have our line just taking 70% of the page up still in the center. So that looks pretty good. We can move on from there. We have this container. This is going to be the full course container. Let's look at it on the page first here. I just wanna make sure we understand what we're talking about here. 
So this is what the container is covering now. It'll cover basically all the courses that we want to display at a time, and it would handle the forward and the back button there. So I want to have a container that has a very large middle, a small sides where I could put these buttons in. I could put them on the sides, but the middle is where everything should be taken up. So what I'm going to do is use display grid and work with that. What we could do with display grid, let's do that first, is set the width to 100%. And now we'll set a grid template columns. Now, how many columns do we want in this area? We're going to have three different pieces. We're going to have the button, then we're going to have the courses in the middle, and then we need a space for the other button on the other side. So we need three different spaces for three different components, button, courses, button. Now the courses are much, much bigger, so we need to give them a lot of room. So we're going to say for the first button, 1FR, so one unit of free space. For the middle one, 16FR, so 16 units of free space, and then the last one is 1FR again. So both of the arrows will have those 1FR of space, and then the rest of it will just be this here, the middle portion. Now let's populate that container so we could see it in action. So here's our container. So in this container, we're going to have a div with a class name equal to course dash slider underscore underscore course dash dash back. So that's going to be the back arrow, the arrow that points to the back there. And we could close the div as well. And I'll write back in here. Now, next, we'll have a div with a class name equal to, and that one will be the course slider courses. Those are the actual courses within it. So course dash slider underscore underscore courses. And inside of there, we can write courses. Now we have one more, and that'll be the forward. So I'm just going to copy this back one, paste it in, change it from back to forward, and the same thing here, forward. And let's look at our screen now. Cool. You can see we have back, then we have courses, which takes up almost the entirety of the page, and then forward. And let's get that highlighted here. Here we go, there's the courses. So this is what happened when we set it up into those blocks and we gave so much room to the block in the middle and the sides had very little room. So picture inside of courses, everything that's happening here, and then these buttons are on the side for forward and back. The first thing that we'll do is work on the courses part, the part that'll be in the middle, and that will take a little bit of work because you have to see how much is going on here. We want three of them. We want them to lift off and onto the page, and we want to add a button in on the bottom. So let's get started on that. We saw that we brought in courses, so we have access to all the courses in our dummy data, and we could use that in order to make our list that we're going to display. The first thing I'm going to do is make a hard copy of it. So course copy is going to equal dot 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 courses. And this won't, this again won't make complete sense right now until later on because we want to add basically an ending slide to this. So if it slides too far to the right, we're going to add a slide to this array that comes in from eventually our database and not from the dummy data section. And what will happen with that slide is it'll point to more courses, like click this button and you'll go to the full course load page or something like that. Uh, so we'll make a copy of it instead of just using the data that we get from courses, because we don't want to mutate that data or do anything to it uh, that could mess it up. So it's always good to make a hard copy like this. Now let's use map to return a new array so that we can get a list of this data that displays very nicely. So just follow along with this. 
uh, const course list is going to equal course copy what we just made dot map. Now map returns a new array, so whatever we do here is going to be stored inside the variable course list. What we want to do first is take the element, and this can be anything. It doesn't have to be el. I think it's just easy to say element. Uh, it's one element of the array. And let me show you what an element is before we go too fast. So in courses for the dummy data, an element of an array of objects is the entire object. So courses at zero, this array would be this entire object here. So it'd have a title, it'd have an author. At one, it'd be this entire, entire object that has a title, an image author, price, and so on. So each one of these elements is what we're iterating through and creating this new list, which can be displayed with some divs and class names so it looks good. So here we are with an element, and that element is going to have a fat arrow inside of it, and then we get working on styling. We have to do one different thing that we haven't done yet. We need a key. Our key for this, usually it's like an element.id, we're going to do element.position. Then we can close this up, and inside of that div is where we're going to do all of our work. First, we'll have the image. That's what will be on top, the IMG. And let's have a class name there of course slider course image. So class name equals course dash slider underscore underscore course dash dash image. We'll need our SRC, our source for this. And each one of them will have the same source, element.img its image. And finally, just give it an alt, and the alt will just hook up to the element.name, so if it can't find the photo, it'll display the name. Close that up, and we're going to head to the bottom. Now, what does the bottom look like? This is the image, so I consider that the top. Now, the bottom has quite a few things in it. The name of the course, the author of the course, the price of the course, and the buy button, or the add to cart button. So let's start getting those things set up. So after image, make a div with a class name equal to course slider course bottom dash dash bottom. And inside of there is where we're going to put everything. So let's make our divs. Divs class name will be course you know, I'm going to copy this just to make everything a little bit easier. Course slider, course bottom, and what we called it was title. That'll be the element, and so make sure you open up your curly braces, element.title. The next thing we want is another div with a class name. That will be equal to course letter course, oops, too many quotes. Course slider, course bottom, dash dash author. And that will be element dot author. And you know what? Put the word by before it. By and then element dot author. That looks good. And we need the price. So another div, another class name for us. And it'll be dash dash price. And in there, el dot price. Now where it says courses, we're going to drop in our course list and see what shows up on the screen. All right, great. This looks really good. This is what we're looking for here. Everything is on the screen, all the images the names of the courses, the name of the author, and the price for all of them are there. But I want them to be one, two, three across this page. So let's work on that. We need to now work on where we are, which is right here in courses, so course slider courses. So over here at the end, we could, we could do it at the top too. So course slider, so we'll put it above title, and underscore, underscore courses. Let's do a display of grid again, a width of 100, 
And now we want three different columns for this. So grid template columns, and then one fr, one fr, one fr. Let's see what we're working with now. Well, here we are, we are three across. So we were looking for that, and it does look like it worked properly. Now it's time to style each one of the courses individually so that they all look the same. So we have something for that already. That's right over here in our course slider. It's what we did for our course list. We have this first div, that can be our container. So let's give that a class name too. The name will be uh, course slider underscore underscore course. And that's the singular of course. So this will just be one course, just this one and just this one. It won't be the list of all three of them or technically all four of them right now. All right, we'll head over back to course slider and let's work on just the course. So, and you see where it says courses, we're just going to have the singular course. And here we will have a display of flex, which will move them next to each other, everything next to each other. We don't want that. So let's have a flex direction of column. And there they are back to how they should be. Next, let's define the height of the entire unit. We'll make a height of 34 rem. Okay, good, now we're starting to get somewhere. It's starting to look good. Let's do some margins to move them off of each other. So we'll do margin, and we're going to write three rem, two rem. So there in the margin, you can actually do you can do margin several different ways. So if I wanted to write each piece of the margin, it's just the clockwise movement of it. I could write four pieces. Um, and this would basically mean uh, margin top three rem, margin right two rem, margin bottom one rem, margin left one rem. But uh, the way we're doing it, we're just doing top and bottom. Uh, we're doing top bottom and then left right. That's how we're doing it. Cool, this looks a lot better now, really, really good. Now we're starting to actually get separation between all of them, separation from the line above it. Now I want these to look like they lift off the page a little bit. So let's use that box shadow trick that we used on the header. So our box shadow will be zero, 0 0.5, uh, and that's rem, and then one rem, then the R, G, B, A, and inside there we'll do our color black and our 0.15. Take a look at that. That does look good. Okay, we have now cards here. They look like they're raised off the page in this uh, top courses section. Good. Let's change that cursor to a pointer. Now when we move over them, well let me get out of this first. Yeah, we get a pointer when we're on one of these. And I want them to lift off the page when I go over it like this too. So we're going to do a little hover effect here. So after this, and hover. And inside of that, we'll have a transform, translate, and just Y. And do that negative two pixels. Now it'll move a little bit. You can see it jumping around as you're over it. We also want to increase the box shadow at that point. So it really seems like it's lifting off the page and the shadow behind it gets a little bit larger. So what I'll do with that, let's move this to 0.8 and let's move this one to 1.5 rem and we'll see we have a lot more lift. There we go, the shadow gets bigger, looks a lot better. It's very, very jerky. Let's fix that with our transition, transition. We'll say all 0.4 seconds. There we go. Now we're getting some lift and some return to the screen. Cool, let's work on what's inside of these course cards now. We'll head back over here and work on that. So still inside of course here, but below hover, I'm going to write end and we'll start with the image, dash dash IMG. Let's set the height of that to be half of it, which is 17 rem, because we have 34 rem as the height. There we go, now we're half image, and we're half where all of the text will go. So after image, let's go and get to that bottom container. So n dash dash bottom, 
display will be flex, flex direction will be column, and justify content will be space between. And we won't see anything yet from this because we do need to set the height to be the other half. So we'll set it to 17 rem. And now we could take a look. We have half of it covered by the photo, half of it covered by all of the text here, and there's a good space between all of those things. Now we're going to use some extra features of CSS here to do some pretty cool stuff inside the bottom here. So in bottom, do end dash dash to title. We're starting to lock how many lines a title can be before it goes into a text overflow with some ellipses, meaning dot dot dot, headed off of the, uh, not the screen, but the card itself. So if this was going too long, maybe it hit two lines, and then it would just be dot dot dot. That's what we want, so these names can't get so long that our elements really get messed up. So inside of title, we're going to have a very new display. Uh, so write WebKit, and it'll be box in there, WebKit box. The text align will be center. The height will be 4.5 rem, and we'll have a margin. This will take it off of all the sides of 0.7 rem. Let's take a look at what we're looking at here. There you go, that margin's working. It takes it off the top, takes it off the left a little bit. Let's do a font size of 1.6 rem and a font weight of a little bit heavier. Let's do 600 rather than 800. Uh, normal would be our 400. Things are looking pretty cool. We are going to want to test our web clamp here, but uh, let's do the clamp first and then we'll try testing it. Uh, WebKit dash line clamp, perfect. So we have our line clamp. I'm only allowing two lines and then we need the WebKit uh, box orientation no, it's box orient, not orientation. Box orient is vertical. Okay, and we want all of the overflow here to be hidden and the text overflow to be ellipses, perfect. Okay, cool. We have that all set up, but we have to test it. So let's give it a shot. We'll put it into inspect. And in inspect, we will shrink this down. There we go. Okay, see, we get the WebKit clamping down on it. This is perfect. This looks really good. You're able to go ahead and make it small and the names still show, but they don't go over into more lines and mess up the whole web page. Next, we have the author. So we did the title. So let's go and dash dash author. In here, we'll have a display, will be dash WebKit box, and the WebKit line clamps, and let me pull those from here, actually. These two. Uh, the WebKit line clamp, I actually just want one here. Now I want these two as well, so that's the text overflow and the overflow itself. We're putting those both at hidden, and text overflow will be ellipses. We'll define the text Align, and we'll just put that towards the left. Let's also move this off of the left and right a little bit. So we'll say, how about margin? Uh, you know, let's do margin left. Margin left. Let's put that off three rem. And margin right. Let's put that off just one rem. Let's kind of give it some room just in case the name is too long sucks for it to be off the page. That does look a lot better. It's coming off more inside of everything and see if the WebKit works. Yes, the WebKit is working perfectly. We're clamped to one line. Good, let's just set up our price next. Here we go. And dash dash price. The text align on price. 
is going to be to the right. So we'll put it on the opposite side. The font size will be 1.6 rem. The font weight will be 600, so a little bit bold. And then the margin right, which would take it off the wall a little bit towards the right, 2.5 rem. Let's take a look. There we go, looking really, really good. So we did a lot here. We're not quite where we want to be with this whole component, but we did a lot of work here. We'll add this button to the bottom. We'll add those buttons on the side, and then we can get to work on some more programmatic stuff where we actually navigate through the courses using React. Thanks for being with me on this one, and let's head right over to the next one so we could finish this up.